So one of my Locals members asked me to react to this video. It's very short. It's only 56 seconds long. And I have not watched it all the way through. I watched like the first five seconds of it just to kind of assess what it was, but I have not watched it. So this will be a real reaction video. Um, and I am going to put on my headset right now because I don't want to have an echo or anything like that. So forgive me, I should have done this in advance, but I'm not going to stop because I don't have time to do a lot of editing today. So here we go. Not sure what to expect here, but I have a feeling it's another one of those in-class videos. So let's see. If you would just get up and teach them instead of handing them a freaking packet, yo. Okay, I want to stop here. Look at the teacher. What he's talking about, handing them a freaking packet, yo. In school these days, and this looks to be high school, this is something they do. They hand the kids a packet of things to do, and then they sit back at their desk doing whatever the heck it is they want to do, and the kids have to work alone. They have to figure things out on their own. Oftentimes, they're just referred to something in a Chromebook or a Google Classroom, and they're trying to figure it out. And then they have to admit in front of their peers, which is difficult, that they don't understand what's going on and get the teacher's attention to ask a question, which very often they don't do. Because look at her body language. And, and she's not alone. I've tutored kids. I can't tell you how many kids I've tutored who describe this exact scene. Scene: Teacher sitting at the desk in a leaning position with her computer open, eyes mostly directed on the computer, but like somewhat at the class, somewhat at the computer. And they ha either hand out work or direct them to do something and then they do something else. They're not, they're not engaged. They're not interested in their class. And let's go back and hear what he has to say again. If you would, if just, you would just get up and teach them instead of handing them a freaking packet, yo. If you would just get up and teach them instead of handing them a freaking packet, yo. Now let's take a look at the body language of the kids in the class. Look at them. One girl has her hands over her face. I don't know why. Could be because the person is recording and she knows someone's recording and she doesn't want her face on the camera. The girl behind her is looking down at her hands, don't know what she's doing there. Look at the boy to his left. He's slumped over his desk, just staring at the desk. Now, I gather this incident started before the person picked up their phone and started recording, and that could be contributing to the body language of the kids. Maybe he's an argumentative student who takes on the teacher frequently, and they're sort of alternately embarrassed and frustrated by it. But let's watch the rest and see if he doesn't have a point. I, my initial reaction is he may well have a point because the chances are the kids in the class are confused and don't know what's going on, or possibly the teacher has just said something about that and is not looking like she's interested in instruction at all. Let's keep going. If you would just get up and teach them instead of handing them a freaking packet, yo. There's kids in here who don't learn like that. There's kids in here who don't learn like that. I'm sure he's right. I'm 100% certain he is sure there are kids like that in the classroom because that's pretty typical. That's every age group. It doesn't really matter, but handing a kid a packet for any subject, but possibly this subject, it's hard to tell what it is. I mean, it looks like it could be social studies, history, something like that. It's just not how people learn things. I mean, expecting these kids to learn everything on their own, we already know what literacy rates are. We already know kids are being socially promoted. It, it's unlikely you have a majority of students in the class who are self-motivated and self-directed enough to just need what they call a guide on the side. And she's not looking much like a guide, is she? Teach them instead of handing them a freaking packet, yo. There's kids in here who don't learn like that. Bye. They need to learn face to face. Bye. You're just getting mad because I'm pointing out the obvious no, and you're choosing. You're wasting my time. Bye, bye. Listen to how disrespectful she is to him. Now, again, he may be a frustrating kid to deal with, but no, I'm mad because you're just wasting my time. What time is that? Look at how she's leaning. And ha first of all, should a teacher, unless they're taking a test, be just seated in their seat, leaning back like that? I don't know what exactly is going on in the class right now, but 
he wasn't set off by nothing. And he says, you're just mad because I'm pointing out, you know, I'm telling you the truth. You're wasting my time. It's their time, too. I'm not wasting your time. I'm telling you what you need to do. Yeah. You want kids to come into your class? You want them to get excited yeah, for this? You, you got to come in here. You got to make them excited. You want a kid to change and start doing better? You got to touch his freaking heart. Can't expect a kid to change if all you do is just tell him. There's so much truth there. Like, who could argue? If he's motivated to stand up in front of the room and say these things, all of which are true in a vacuum, in a vacuum, they're true. So I have a hard time believing he's just showboating, especially with her going, bye, bye, get out, get out. Why not engage him? Why not pull him back into the class and say, all right, I'll tell you what. It sounds like you have an idea about how I should be doing that. So let, let's give her the benefit of the doubt that he's just out to lunch and he, or he's showboating or whatever for the camera. I might say, all right, okay, so you don't think that I am doing my job. I'll, I'll hear what you have to say. What do you think would be helpful? What should I be doing when you talk about, you know, getting them excited about the material, when you talk about this, what do you think I could be doing different? Let's have a conversation. Let's have that conversation. In fact, you know what? Let's all have the conversation. If maybe you have a point and I'm I'm just wrong. I mean, I definitely don't want the kids to not learn. I definitely don't want them not to be excited about this material. So let's have a conversation. I would sit myself down at a desk with them face to face, not like we're equals, but just to let them know that I'm willing to listen and then say, what would get you excited about this topic? What do you not find exciting about this topic? What do you think is hard about this? If you don't want to share in front of your peers, that's fine. I understand that. But what could I do generically to, you know, or what could I do generally if they wouldn't understand generically? Whatever. I just think everything he said is true in a vacuum. So there's some reason he said it here. And even if I were a frustrated teacher who was burnt out and exhausted and had a bunch of kids not behaving, although they seem like they're behaving, they're just sitting quietly. It's not like the desks are all in a disarray and they're throwing things. I'd be curious to hear what they had to say. Let's go back a bit. You got to touch his freaking heart. Can't expect a kid to change if all you do is just tell him. That's you got to take news. this job serious. This is the future of this nation. And when you come in here like you did last time and make a statement about, oh, this is my paycheck. In wow. Okay. Benefit of the doubt is gone. Benefit of the doubt is gone. You don't discuss your paycheck in the classroom and you definitely don't say anything along the lines of this is my paycheck. Did you happen to hear, I'm going to go back to it, but did you hear, listen for it, the student said something like what it is or something like that. So let's go back and see. I hope I can catch that. You got to take is. this job seriously. He said what it is. Okay. The person making the video doesn't appear to be making the video to do anything negative to this guy. He appears to be making the video because he wants to expose what's going on with this teacher as well. He's allowing this kid to do this, and I can see why now. And if that is true, that she said that, that is way out of line. This is the future of this nation. And when you come in here like you did last time and make a statement about, oh, this is my paycheck, indeed. Will you please leave? She doesn't want this getting on video. Will you please leave? This is a serious situation. This is a serious conversation. She wants him to get out so the video start, stops. Here, like you did last time, and make a statement about, oh, this is my paycheck. Indeed it is. But this is my country's future okay. and my education. This is my education and this is my country's future. Good for you, young man. You're absolutely right. 100% correct. It's your time being wasted as well. But she sounds like she's about to say something. Let's hear what she has to say. Let's give her a chance. Indeed it is. But this is my country's future okay. and my education. I, I that. Can you go outside, please? I respect that, but can you go outside, please? That's not how you would talk to somebody if you respected that. First of all, you wouldn't have said anything in the first place about your paycheck in the classroom. Secondly, if she really respected what he was saying, she would say, let's talk about it right here, right now. This is a this is what they call a teachable moment. If she has the heart and soul of a teacher 
and she's getting criticized, she'll use it to her best advantage to teach. You got to be willing to take criticism. You got to be willing to hear what your students have to say. And he's being very polite. I mean, he's gotten up and he's heading out the door, but he's still being relatively polite, all things considered. If a teacher says, this is my paycheck, I respect that, but can you please go outside? He just told you, this is my education. This is my country's future okay. and my education. I, I respect that. Can you go outside, please? Score But there's a limit. When I'm not bitching, but simply making an observation. Okay, okay. And now I will leave. If you would just... Okay. He's right. There's a limit. And he used the word at the end, which, I don't know, that kind of falls in that gray area. It's part of the vernacular. It just means complaining. But regardless, he made it all that way without saying anything that was even borderline. And it sounded like he was getting a little choked up at the end. It sounded like he sincerely cares, too, about his classmates, not just himself. And he obviously cares about the future and the country's future. And I'm kind of appalled. This video got 87,000 thumbs down. The tags are shorts, motivation, and mindset. This is an articulate, obviously very intelligent young man. Again, I don't know what his history is in the class, but... He's not wrong. Anybody going into the classroom and dropping the this is my paycheck. And I know I'm missing a lot of context, but there's zero. Just like there, the, what he said was true in a vacuum. There is I don't need context to know that you don't discuss that in the class with your students. You don't. And he still gave her the respect of, you know, I know it is, but. You just don't do, there's no place for that. If you're that frustrated that you need to start talking about your paycheck, whatever it is, whether it's too high, too low, or this is just a job for me, or this is my job and you got to, you know, do whatever this is my pay. I don't care. I don't even want to know the context. It shouldn't come up to these students. It, it shouldn't. As my guest today, Bonnie Snyder pointed out, the the teachers are starting to act like the school is there for them as a jobs program, as opposed to there for the students to educate them. When they're saying things, as she pointed out, like, isn't it great at the school when the kids aren't here? We have a problem. And just judging by her body language alone, I don't think if I were a principal in that school and I walked past that classroom and I saw one of the teachers that I'd hired like this in a chair, and not facing them close in and, you know, we're having an engaged conversation. So I'm leaning back because, you know, we're all leaning back and getting comfortable and having a conversation. If I just saw the students sitting at their desk and the teacher sort of leaning back like that. Yeah, I'd want to know more. I would I would be pretty upset. I'd say, you know, justify this. Explain this to me, please. And I'd also give this young man an audience and say, talk to me. Tell me what's going on. Why are you feeling like this? And then ask the teacher to like explain. Why didn't you engage the young man while he was still in the room? Why did you kick him out of the room? Why did you kick him out of the building? Why did you know why are you allowing somebody who feels this bad and can, who can articulate it so well to walk out of your classroom? He's teaching you. You may not like the sound of it. You may not like his style. You may not like his timing, but he's got something to say. And the best way to diffuse the situation is not to kick him out of the room. So that's my reaction to this. If you think differently, I, I'm happy to hear it in the comments, but that's what I would have done. But let me preface this by saying I would not have been in this situation in the first place, at least with her posture. I can't promise you I wouldn't have ever been in a situation with, you know, uninspired students. Sometimes it happens, but I would take that very seriously. And if I had a student who got this passionate about it, about my lack of engagement with my students, that would probably be my cue to quit. I'd probably have to look in the mirror and say, where have I gone wrong? Where have I gone wrong that my energy in the classroom is such that there is a student who is this smart and this articulate who feels the need to do what he just did? I would definitely take that as a sign that something is up with me. So for what it's worth, if you like this sort of content, please consider liking, sharing, commenting, and definitely subscribing to the channel and also joining my locals community at the reason we learn.locals.com where we can talk about this and many other issues related to education 
at length. Thanks for watching.